The following presentation was recorded at the 2011 Southeast Linux Fest in Spartanburg, South Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following Diamond and Platinum sponsors in 2011 for helping make these videos possible. Well, this is the intro to Drupal theming session. Just so you know, if that's what you're here for, awesome. If you're looking for something else, um, you're probably in the wrong room. Um, but just to start off with, you can find these slides so you don't have to worry about typing out links and all that stuff. At this URL, it's lbt.me slash theming intro. That's just a link to, I just threw the PowerPoints on my blog. And uh, you can go over there and download them. I couldn't get them to upload the SlideShare. I apologize. Just to start off with, um, a little bit about myself. My name is Thomas Lattimore. I am a freelance front-end developer and really specialize in Drupal. That's where my passion lies. Uh, I really like Drupal theming. That's, that's what I enjoy doing most. Um, if you want to stalk me a little bit, I'm known as T. Lattimore and on Drupal.org and Twitter. You can hit me up there if you have any questions later on. And uh, I'm the maintainer of the Web 110 lightly textured and tumble-like themes on Drupal.org. If you want to check those out, um, just free themes available on Drupal.org that I've contributed back. And uh, let's get started. So what we're going to be covering today uh, first off, it's just how the, the templating system in Drupal works. Sometimes that can be a little bit confusing. There's a lot of different template files that go into what making up a Drupal theme. And there's an inheritance and a way that they're structured within one another, and we're going to be covering that. Just touching briefly on it, uh, we're going to be talking about what it is in definition, like what is Drupal theming, what, what is it and what it is not. Um, we're going to be covering just some basic tools, how to get started theming, um, just simple things like code editor, stuff like that. I'm really going to try and break down the basics of how to get started theming. Like, I'm, I'm going to really start out like creating the directory, adding it to the proper place within Drupal, really like the bare bones. So. If some of y'all are, are maybe a little bit more advanced themers or have done theming before, some of this session might be a little bit um, boring to you. But I hope that you know, maybe some people trying to get into it can find some useful information about it. And then we're just going to bail on the slides and notes. And I'm just going to basically walk you through the process of converting a static HTML file to a working Drupal theme. But for, before we really dive in, can I just get a show of hands? Who in here has built a Drupal theme before? All right, all right. And who in here has maybe you've managed a Drupal site and you've at, at least gone in and changed the theme on a Drupal site? Or you've, all right, good, good. So dr download one from Drupal.org, maybe change the theme that a, that a developer on your team gave you or something like that. Um, so Drupal theming defined, defined. This is how I really define it. This is my, my personal opinion on what it is. Um, some would probably argue with me. And there's a, there's a little bit of uh, debate, because the, the whole idea of a themer is it's kind of an odd niche, because you're a front-end developer, but at the same time, you're also working with the server-side language, which is you're interacting with PHP, which is really back-end development, even though you're not necessarily interacting with the database that much. There's a little bit of debate about what it is. But I really define it as this. Drupal's just this big fire hose of data, because it really is. I mean, Drupal is really data heavy. And we might even get into some of that later on. Just, it, it is really incredible how much data is exposed to the theme layer. I mean, it, it's a lot, really. So you have all that data, but then what do you do with it when you serve it up to the browser? What does it look like? How does the user interact with it? How does it all tie together? That's what I really define as theming, is controlling that 
just fire hose of information and how it looks and appears and how the user interacts with it in the browser. And Drupal's templating system, when you open up a, a Drupal theme, you're going to see all these .tpl, .php files, and there's a myriad of them. There's, uh, beginning at the top, there's html.tpl.php, then there's page.tpl.php, then inside that there's region.tpl.php, then inside that there could be node.tpl, or there could be block.tpl inside that, depending on what is placed within that region. And so they work kind of like the Russian doll effect. You've got like bigger templates that aren't necessarily more complex. Sometimes it can be a really small template as far as what it delivers up to the page. But there's like this, this hierarchy of what's on the outside of the page beginning with HTML and then inside that with page. And, and I'll get into that when we actually dive in and start coding some. And this next slide kind of explains a little bit. And unfortunately, this is a little outdated. I found this on Drupal.org, but I thought it was a very good image just showing kind of the inheritance of how Drupal themes work. This is outdated in the fact that it was uh, done for Drupal 6. And today, just to um, mention, we are going to be working on Drupal 7 just because that's where things are going. And there are no, there's some pretty major changes, but if you learn Drupal 7 theming, then 6 is a breeze, because actually Drupal 7 is a little bit more difficult. But it basically works. You have style sheets and beginning. First, you have to have a .info file. That is the first process to beginning any theme. You could actually, in theory, have an entire Drupal theme that is just a .info file, in theory, because Drupal has default TPL files. And then what we do when we create a theme is we override those. Um, and like one good example of, of just how you can theme using very little uh, TPL files is um, the Stark theme that comes with Drupal 7. All it is is a .info file and a style.css. And it's like a functional theme. It's not pretty, but it is a working theme that has no PHP involved at all. And it's just a really cool example. But here's the basic structure. You got your TPL files. We normally would have HTML.php, TPL.php above page in Drupal 7, but again, as I said, it's outdated. Then block, then node, and then you have your template.php, which is where you'll put all your custom functions, whether you're over overriding Drupal, adding new variables, things like that and just your basic other things like your logo screenshot stuff like that and then anything else that pertains to the same theme whether it's javascript images um, anything else custom php includes and then when you have a sub theme all a sub theme is basically is a theme and we'll we'll get into this in a few minutes as well is a, a theme that just has written in the dot .info, in your dot .info file, um, base theme, and then the machine name of whatever your parent theme is. And what that allows you to do is uh, inherit another theme's settings and functions and whatever functionality it provides. So you don't have to overwrite code in order to change something. So if I go out and download a contributed theme from Drupal.org, the smarter thing to do is actually create a base theme under that so that when the community contributes back to that theme that I downloaded, I get to take part in those changes without having to worry about um, managing the code that I changed in the theme, like all the custom CSS or whatever I had to change, things like that. Um, so today, um, I would say to really understand where we're going is you need a, a, a not thorough, but basic understanding of how uh, HTML and CSS work. Um, it's, it's just kind of essential. Um, I don't think you're going to get lost without that, but really to get started theming, you need a basic understanding of how to lay out stuff with CSS and HTML and do it properly. Um, a Drupal install, in our case today, it's going to be Drupal 7. And a good code editor, this is very e essential. Like, I, I really wish someone had told me about like, getting a good readable 
code editor when I had first started doing web technology coding stuff because it would have made things a lot easier. It, I mean, it's a very basic thing, but something that someone didn't really teach me early on, and I, I think it's just absolutely essential. And here, just to close out a little bit, some projects on Drupal.org that I think you should know about if you're really wanting to get involved with theming. Um, first one is Mothership, and this is actually a, um, it's intended to be used as a, a parent theme or a base theme. It doesn't really do a lot visually, but it basically makes theming in Drupal a lot easier in my opinion. Um, Drupal does a lot of odd stuff with CSS and things like that that probably shouldn't be done. And, and many other things, Add, adds divs and classes that aren't needed necessarily. And what Mothership does is it cleans it up. And we're actually going to create a sub-theme of Mothership today. Um, another one's Devel, which is, it can do a ton of stuff that I don't do. It can, like, analyze page load times and all, all sorts of stuff. But I, I basically use it to e expose the um, variables on a page. It can basically does a has some built-in functions that just let you look at what's being served up to the page and things like that. And then there's develop themer. That's basically like Firebug, <coughs> excuse me, for Drupal theming. Allows you to click around on the page and see what variable or function generated any given object. And it pops up in this nice little JavaScript window. It's still a little buggy for seven, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna actually demo that today or not. And Firebug, like, uh, Firebug is a Firefox plugin that also, I believe there's also a Chrome plugin for it as well, and I'm sure there's some other things for Safari. But I don't know how I would do Drupal theming without it. And the reason for that is, is in Drupal, there are so many classes and IDs that are placed on objects that I don't necessarily control. They may be by a contributed module or something that, you know, a custom module, a developer handed to me. And uh, I need a way to quickly view that. And it, it, I, I honestly, like, if, if there's no other tool that you use out of these, you need to be using Firebug because it makes, makes your world way, way simpler. And uh, that's it for the slides part. Before we move on, is there anyone that has any questions? Anything that just went way over your head or you're like, I mean, no, no question is too ridiculous. I mean, honestly, any, any questions at all before we move on? All right, let's get started then. All right, first off, we just have a extremely simple, um, just static HTML page I did. Nothing complex about it. I didn't want the design to be fancy at all because I didn't want it to distract from what we were trying to do. But basically, um, you know, it's just a two column layout, just kind of like what you'd see on a blog, nothing special about it. Uh, but to kind of talk about that uh, template structure, the first thing that we want to do um, when we're given something from a designer or um, maybe you're given an HTML file to convert or maybe even a theme from another content management system. I've heard of that happening before too and I've actually had to do it. Um, is narrow down like the different sections of your theme that you're going to have to break apart. So like first off, as if we were overriding everything, we'd have the html.tpl, which is, it wrap, it's the wrapper for the whole page. Basically, in a Drupal 7 theme, you don't have to alter or mess with, um, unless you want to override it, which there's really no reason to, um, your information inside, inside your header tag. So basically from the body up, for those that understand HTML, and from the body down, uh, all the way to closing HTML, you don't have to mess with that information at all. You only have to alter what's inside here. Does that make sense? And then inside that, we have our page.tpl, and that's basically you know just this page structure. 
and then inside that we'd have a region, which could be, a region can be a, a myriad of things because uh, main content is a block in Drupal 7. Um, for those that are familiar with Drupal 6, it was actually a hard-coded variable, but in Drupal 7 you print out a region and you place your main content within that region. So inside a region you could have a node or you could have a block, either one. So that would be like our main content. That could be a block. Um, our main menu is printed out through um, calling a function and then just another region down there. But uh, one of the easiest ways to get started is go to my root directory here. So you have a root Drupal install. And one pretty cool thing is you have all your documentation in code when it comes to open source. It's all exposed to you. You can look at the code. And all the information that we actually need is right there in Drupal. So all template files are generally placed in a module folder of the module that they're used for. And in our case today, we're actually only going to alter one template file. Out of all those that I just mentioned, we're only going to alter one of them. That's page.tpl.php. Because the others we don't need to. The, their default state is perfectly fine. There's nothing that we need to alter in them to, to accomplish what we need to do today. Um, so to reference that, we would go to the root directory of your Drupal install and then go to the modules folder in the system folder. Now, very important, very important. Do not alter anything in this folder at all. Do not. Just don't do it. Kittens die if you do it. They do. Um, because if you overwrite anything in this folder, then next time you go to update Drupal, it will blow away all your changes. You, you will have no more, any, anything you altered within this folder will be gone the next time you update your Drupal install. And you don't want to do that. So all we're going to do today, actually, is we're just going to open up this page.tpl file as a point of reference, um, largely just because there's some parts that are that I don't want to take the time to write out by hand. Just see right off the bat, there's this large section of comments at the top that ha has documented every variable that is printed out within this template. It's pretty cool, I think. Um, I've worked with other systems like WordPress. And WordPress has a lot of documentation online, but I think it's really handy just to have it right there available. Like, um, if I don't have internet access somewhere, as long as I'm running localhost and have a Drupal install, I have the documentation available if I forget something because it's a pretty large file and sometimes can be easy to forget um, what the name of a specific variable is. And all right. And next, we are actually going to start working on our theme now that we've opened up that other one just as a point of reference. So when you download a theme from Drupal.org or you create a custom theme, it should always go inside the Sites All Modules folder. Or it may not, not modules, Sites All Themes folder. Do not put it in the themes folder that's right off the root directory. And I'll actually show you that real quick. I'm not really sure why it's done this way. I think it's pretty confusing to new people. But don't, don't ever mess with anything in here. Yeah. Those are all core base themes. And anything you change to them, as I mentioned with the stuff inside modules, when you update Drupal, it will be blown away. It will be gone. So don't do it. Put anything custom inside a Sites All Themes folder. And we are just going to copy this basic HTML file we have, or um, HTML file and then CSS as well. 
into that folder and rename it. Um, Drupal doesn't have any specific, like you don't have to, to name the directory a machine name or anything like that. You can name it whatever you want. Um, I'll just put uh, And now, what we're going to do is we're going to rename this as page.tpl.php. And before we actually jump in there, we're going to create a new document. This document is going to be our .info file. It's called a .info file. Um, all modules and all themes have to have one. It's basically uh, it can do some other things uh, like that. Like can be used to add CSS and JavaScript and can be used to uh, do some theme settings and some other stuff. But basically, it's meta information for Drupal. Your your theme's name. Um, whether or not it has a base theme, things of that nature. And the name of this is the machine name of your theme. And that's an important thing to remember. So if you're wanting to know what, wanting to have your theme have a specific machine name or wanting to remember what the machine name is, you just have to go to the .info file. And we're just going to call it DCSC. All right, and now, very first thing that we want to add to our .info file is the name of our theme, and we can just name it DCSC Theming Intro. And then next, there's a description, and these all these parameters are listed on Drupal.org under a page called uh, something like default.info parameters or something like that. I should know it because I have to look it up quite often. But it's on there under the documentation section under the theming handbook. Um, it's one of the first pages there. And we're just not going to type anything there because what you want to the theming description actually can be pretty important. Um, like if your theme has a, a parent theme, that's one thing that uh, would be important to reference there. Or just what the theme's intended for, any technical information that might need to be known about it. Maybe modules that it's intended to be used with, something like that. Um, Um, and next we are going to list the core, and this is our, whatever version of Drupal we're running. If we were running 6x, uh, it would be 6.x instead of 7x, pretty simple. And one thing to note is all of these, well actually not the description tag. Um, but the name and the core are required. What, what's called required parameters, meaning that the theme, like, it won't let you enable the theme without them being there. Like, if if I left core out and went to the appearance page, it'd say like this theme is not compatible with this version of Drupal because I hadn't given it what information, the proper information, for it to be compatible with, with it. All right. Next, we're going to list off the regions that we want. And uh, we're going to have just four regions here today. And regions are defined by just the name region and then the machine name of the region within the brackets there. An equal sign. And then this here, you can name whatever. Um, if you wanted to, I don't know, print it out as something different and like 
say if you had a, a, a before content section or something like that, and that's what you wanted to call it, call the variable as is in, in your theme, but you wanted someone on the blocks administration page to see it as a featured section on the site for like the featured content or something like that. You can change the name and I don't know. I've, I've done that before where the, the actual name is much different than the machine name. And then content, and this one is required. I believe so. Yes, I believe it's required. This is one of the default ones, and that's actually where the main content of our page, by default, is going to be printed out. And And uh, this is pretty important here, I think. Sidebar first, even though we only have one sidebar in our theme. Um, I go ahead and call it as sidebar first because uh, that's the default uh, value for Drupal, meaning that if someone uh, plugged in this theme to their site and they already had a block assigned to the sidebar, the sidebar first, then it would automatically pick it up. Does that make sense? That makes sense to anyone. Am I, am I getting over anyone's heads or any, need me to slow down? If you need, if you have any questions, by the way, just you know, speak up. If I. Yes. Does anyone know how to do that in Aptina? It's been a while since I've changed this. Anyone know how to do it in Aptina? I think it's actually controlled by a theme. Uh, I don't know where it is. Anyone know where it is in Eclipse? Yeah. Ecl any Eclipse users in the room? No Eclipse users. I don't, I don't see it in here. I apologize about that. Uh, there we go. There, is that better? Oh, that's way better. I apologize about that. Now, next and last region is going to be the, not fodder, footer. <laughs> and then next we want to call, yes. Um, really, they're, they're in, in, interchangeable, but there's ones that I suggest using, and that, that is, if you're going to have a sidebar on the site, then call it sidebar first or sidebar second, and that's simply because, say if someone had the default theme in Drupal and had a block assigned to uh, a specific sidebar on the page, when they go and enable this theme, I want that block to, to, to actually go somewhere. Because if you enable the theme and that region doesn't exist on the theme you enabled, then it just disables the block. So I recommend using this value, content and sidebar first, which I actually, I, I'm, if I'm correct, I believe content is required. I've never run into it because it's always what I call it anyways. Does that make sense? 
but but I mean I could I could name this foobar or whatever. I mean it it's completely up to me to decide. Um, yeah. Any other questions? All right. Next, we are going to add our style sheets. And this is kind of an odd syntax here. I think it's because in some instances you can reference a print style. I'm correct? Yeah. You can reference a print style style sheet there. So someone's so you could say like style sheets print instead of style sheets all. I haven't ever had to deal with that. Um, but generally that's the syntax for it. And then we put the path to our style sheet. And this path is one of the really cool things about using a content management system. You don't have to mess with paths a lot and like where is your specific CSS file in relation to where you are on the site and stuff. And this path is relative to our .info file. So just to show you, um, here's our .info file. We have the CSS, and then within that, we have two CSS files that we're going to reference. I'm just going to copy this. And that is the bulk of our basic.info file. Oh, wait, features. Forgot something. In a theme, you can have uh, different features like a logo, uh, site name, site slogan, and those can be enabled and disabled from uh, the theme settings page. And today, just for simplicity, I just decided to go with two different features, and that is the name. And these are this is this is Drupal terminology, by the way. This is not something I'm making up here. This is telling Drupal, okay, this theme does have available to it our site name to be printed out. And the main menu. And that's it for our dot info file. No. All right, and now we're going to open up our page.tpl.php. And all this is at this point is just a. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, the easiest way to test. Well, first, you would go to the appearance page in Drupal. Unfortunately, there isn't for everything. And see, here's the theme we just created. And there's no screen. I didn't put a screenshot file in there or anything like that. But it isn't. A lot of times, if you have something missing, then it will spit out an error right here. Like, this theme cannot be enabled for whatever reason. But it's not perfect. Like, um, I think if, like, with the style sheets parameter, it won't tell you if, like, there's been times I'm like, why is my CSS file not being added to the page? And it was like, I, I misspelled style sheets or something like that. So it, it isn't perfect, unfortunately. The easiest thing to do is if something's not working, go back to the handbook page on Drupal.org and double check and make sure because like sometimes the terminology can be, uh, is it style sheet or style sheets that's supposed to be referenced? Well, it's style sheets, but I have misspelled it before. Even after doing it, I don't, I don't know how many times. And there's no error. It just, your CSS file isn't being served up to the page, which is really annoying. Um, this is a basic appearance page, and all this is is a uh, 
base install of Drupal 7 that I've run the Vel module on and generated some nodes. Right here you'll see mother sh the mothership theme. Um, and I'm actually going to reference that real quick in my .info file. That mothership theme, today I, wouldn't, I can't really take time to explain what it does, but it just makes theming less of a nuisance, especially if you come from uh, someone who has a lot of experience in HTML and CSS and you, you hand-coded stuff. It doesn't make you hand-code more, but it kind of takes out a lot of the stupid in what Drupal does to the theme layer, in my opinion. So all we're going to do, so what we're doing is we're creating a sub-theme of Mothership. And that's all you have to do to create a sub-theme right there. So there's tons of great parent themes on Drupal.org that do amazing stuff like dy dynamic layouts and um, like Omega, Fusion, Zen theme. Those are, that's just to name a few. They do some really cool stuff. And that's all you have to do really to create a base theme, but in some instances you may have to copy some functions over and things like that for it to inherit everything. But let's get started actually working in this page.tpl file. First thing we're going to do is we're going to delete everything above and below the body tag. And it looks like I already did that. Um, because Drupal has already created a file that handles all that for us called the um, html.tpl.php file. And that handles all that. Like, we don't have to mess with the header information or where style sheets should be printed out and that kind of stuff because at this point Drupal is handling it for us. So now we're going to enable this theme and set it to default. As you see right there, that's the static HTML file that we just, it's not working yet, but what we've done is I'm in a completely different directory now and we in theory, and I, I say in theory because it's not functional, like no matter how much content we add, we haven't told Drupal where to, to spit it out on this page as of yet. Um, we have a working theme. I mean, you've, you've gotten started, uh, all your CSS is in the right place, and now you just have to tell Drupal where to uh, print out the proper information in what place. First thing is, and I'm not gonna, get, I'm gonna try and not talk about the HTML structure I chose for this because I could be here a lot of time I uh, just want to stay focused. Any questions up to this point? Um, okay. So, Drupal has what it calls a render API that was around in six, version six, I believe for module developers, but now a lot of it has been moved over to the theme layer, and it's a way of basically um, reaching down into PHP arrays and grabbing out information in a way that's a lot easier. And there's also stuff like you can, I won't get into too much detail into that because I could spend a whole session just on, on the render stuff because I like the render stuff a lot. But basically, all we're saying is you have this big PHP, not PHP, well it is PHP, but you have this big page array and you can expose it using a uh, print R function if you needed to and read through it. But every piece of content will almost always be print through that in our page.tpl. And what we're doing is we're going to select the header from that region, from that page array. And what this is, is it's referencing, let me show you, so it's referencing basically this from our .info file, that piece of information. And then, 
for for our site name. First, we want to for most if you're if you have markup on the page, um, you want to always wrap it, almost always wrap it in a if state, if in an end if statement. Reason for that is, is you you may have some padding or some something going on with that markup um, that you don't want it on the page unless a certain variable is set, such as. Um, and I can show you. See how, like, right, right here, the in this is in this the one that we grabbed out of the uh, system module folder. They've just run an if statement on to check to see if the site name is set. That's all it does. It doesn't check to see if it's empty, which it probably couldn't be empty if it's actually set because Drupal doesn't allow you to leave it empty. So we're just going to say if site underscore name set, then we, we're going to want it to process that piece of information. And while we're at it, it's good practice just to go ahead and close that end if statement because it's easy to forget about. And then within here, then our anchor tag, we're just going to, I think it's just a print. And then we're going to go ahead and refresh, make sure it didn't break anything. Hopefully not. As you can see, our title has changed. And now, uh, just with a single variable, it's outputting our site name instead of the plain text that we had in there. Um, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to go ahead and jump past this section here and jump down to the bead section just because I want to make sure that we get through everything and it, that we have time for questions. So we're going to take all that information, that static out of there and going to print out our content. And then also, I'm not going to type this out because it's fairly thorough. There is all this other information that doesn't always get filled. Uh, not the highlighted region. Um, like the title prefix. And that's something that's filled by modules. I'm not actually sure what it's used by, but it's something that module developers can uh, hook into and print out stuff before your title. And then your tabs, that's like your uh, um, edit, edit and view tabs and stuff like that. Rather than typing all these if and end if statements, I'm just going to copy this from our, the one that we got out of system, the system folder into our page.tpl. And right there, I don't know why it broke my layout, but um, you can see that uh, um, we basically printed out the main content of the page. I mean, and what that did, what that was done by was just simply that right there, that one line of code is what print out. This is just a default node page. That's what did all of that. I don't know why my layout broke. I don't know why my layout broke. But I'm going to go ahead and print out the sidebar. Um,
normally I would wrap this in a uh, if and end if statement, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to. Oops. And it's not doing anything. Oh, it's because my sidebar is empty. So right now, there's nothing set to my sidebar, it looks like. Unless I didn't spell the variable right. Yeah, there's nothing set to my sidebar, so there's nothing printed out in there. But normally, uh, there would be something printed out to there. Right, we've got right around 10 minutes left. Um, is there any questions? I, don't have, I was hoping to get through all this, but ran out of time. But that's, that's the basic process I would encourage you to go through when starting theming, is just open up one of the um, TPL files from uh, wherever in Drupal core, whether it's page.tpl, and uh, copy it to a new, an, copied into a new theme, create that .info file, and um, get to work. Any questions at all? Anything really like not explained well or need to be covered a different way? Any general theming questions at all? Got plenty of time. I use Absinthe for everything, actually. Yeah. What do you use? Yeah, I'm on Ubuntu. So. Um. You mean like? Like that? Like automatically closes a tag if I open one? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it helps me cheat a little bit. Aptana, A-P-T-A-N-A. -A. It is actually uh, an Eclipse plugin as well, um, but you can download it like already to get. It basically makes Eclipse work, in my opinion. Uh, I think Eclipse is a little buggy sometimes. Uh, but it can do lots of stuff that I don't do, like uh, debug PHP programs and all sorts of crazy stuff. But it's extremely helpful. Like a good, a good code editor is extremely helpful in doing any coding, whether it's module development, theming. Like it's, it's essential. Any questions? Any more questions? Questions at all? Stare at the code a little bit and see if you, there's something you don't understand. It's not no, joking. I have a question. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is my personal opinion, um, but it, it, it also depends on what you're doing with it. If the theme provides a lot of functionality, like all, all the themes that are intended to be a base theme, uh, like Fusion, 960, Zen, Omega, um, Framework, I would say, my, my personal opinion is, because I work with theming, is don't hack it, create a sub theme. But if you're making a whole lot of changes and you're having to, you're only using a few things. Like I was talking to someone earlier today, and they're using framework, and uh, I was like, "What? You're not creating a sub theme there?" But they basically are only using a small portion of framework for their daily work. They're they're reusing it over and over again, and they've modified it. At that point, when you're you've branched off and you've just used it as a base to do your own thing. Um, it really doesn't matter a whole lot because you're not, you're not going to get that many advantages from the updates. But like I did a project with um, the Omega theme, which is a really cool theme that you should check out. 
Uh, it basically allows you to do dynamic layouts using a grid system, all from like, I, I themed an entire site. I don't think I put like a width tag. I mean, I put like, a, adjusted the width on anything through CSS. Like I, I was able to do almost the entire layout from all the way from the user interface through the theme settings. If, like in that case, I, I would always do a base theme because I don't want stuff to be messed with. And I know that the activity be behind Omega is going to be changing a lot and improving in the future. I, I want to make sure that the client uh, can uh, take advantage of any changes that are made and such. But it, re it really just depends. Um, but as a rule of thumb, I always say create a, create a base theme in, instead of hacking it. But again, personal opinion, there's a little bit of debate about that. Any other questions? Anything you really just didn't understand? Want me to go over again, possibly? General theming questions is all. Any maybe more advanced theming questions? OK. Um, comes to using other people's themes. If it's design changes, uh, create a create a base theme. I mean, yeah, create a sub theme of it. Use it as a base theme, um, and go from there. Don't don't hack it. If it's functionality changes, I would I would look at are these things. Because each company is going to have a different culture and the way the team's set up. And I mean, there's so many different ways, like, you know, the process of going from a designer's mock ups into a Drupal theme can, can really vary from company to company. Um, uh, but if it's, if it's functionality, you might want to look at it and say, is this going to be useful to anyone else? And possibly contribute that back as a patch to the issue queue on drupal.org. Um, and if it's something like if you had to hack it, then you can uh, create what's called a theme setting, um, if you're familiar with those at all. It's really just a few variables when you get down to it in an extra file in your theme folder. I mean, there's a, whole, there's a lot more to it than that, but it's really not that complex to create custom theme settings. Um, then you could create a patch that would uh, tell the theme to use your functionality rather than the functionality it came with. That would, when it comes to giving back to Drupal.org, that would be one way to approach it because sometimes uh, project maintainers don't like stuff just being changed. But if you want to add features to it rather than taking something away, then you could do it through a theme setting and contribute that back as a patch. But it depends on what the change is being made. Now, yes? Okay. That's also really good. I've done that. And that's, that actually is something I did early on. Because really, it's just, it's, this is just personal opinion. It's really just not good to, to download stuff and hack that you've downloaded from Drupal.org. And that's just good practice in general because uh, if you get in the habit of that, you might end up doing that on a module. And the module may have a security hole and need a security update, and then you don't remember what code you actually changed in it, and you have to update for fear of you know, some security breach. And all your changes get blown away, and you don't remember actually what you did. So in just general, copy something rather than, I've even heard people doing that with modules, actually. 
even core modules, copying them and renaming them, that, that seems kind of shady to me. But uh, that, if that's what works for you, copy, rename it, make the changes you need. Any other comments? Just general, maybe a different perspective. Maybe there's some different perspective. Because I'm a themer. Like, all this was from you know, a front-end developer's perspective. I don't maintain that many sites. So the opinions are, are subject to that point of view. Thank you very much. All right, I guess that's it. Thanks a lot for your time. that works the way that you do across all your devices HP Slate and WebOS HP As a service leader in cloud computing all we do is hosted computing to us the cloud is just the next generation of hosting and as someone who's been in the hosting industry for 12 years we feel we're in a unique position to really help bring these two worlds together these different sets of technologies and to help companies embrace this new world and this great new tool it allows faster innovation. Not only is it about us being responsive and accountable, but it's about us doing more for you.